We turn our attention to UCF Volleyball, and I am happy to be joined now by Despina Barton, who always does an excellent job calling games on ESPN+. Plus. Despina, thanks so much for being here. Oh, goodness. I'm so excited to be here, Jeff. And as a proud UCF alum, I really appreciate the invite. And, and what an opportunity it's been to call the majority of the women's volleyball games here as they made their entrance into the Big 12. It's been a ride, and uh, we'll get set to for TCU and hopefully a rebound here after the weekend at Baylor. Yeah, we'll get to that momentarily. I wanted to kind of touch a bird's eye view of the explosion in women's college sports in recent years. You know, you look at basketball, that's no longer the UConn Invitationals. You know, we saw Iowa and LSU create a ton of buzz. Softball, another sport, but growing ratings, great momentum. Volleyball, 92,000 at a football stadium in Nebraska. And also like softball, they're getting ratings, picking up nice time slots on ESPN. What do you make of what has fueled the enthusiasm across that landscape? I think there's a few things that have fueled that. Uh, one is, right, if you give women the same platform that you give men, people will show up, right? And we've seen that with softball and the gradual growth and those ratings that are just skyrocketing every year. And you look back at the WNBA finals and the Aces, Ace and the New York Liberty series. Like you put them in prime time, competing actually with the NFL a couple times in that final series, and they're pulling down monster numbers. There is an audience there. And now you're starting to see the, I will call them mainstream media, give them the platform that they've deserved for so long. I also think that, and as a woman, as a 35 year old, that um, our millennial generation is now getting in a space where we're taking on leadership opportunities. We're the decision makers. We're making sure that we're uplifting the next woman behind us or beside us, or even ahead of us that we are making sure that those opportunities are front and center. And so I think more women at the decision, you know, at the table um, to give these opportunities and just the public is responding, right? Every, not everyone, but it, you know, the many sports fans are sports fans first because of their children, right? There's, you know, not sure what the census data is, but there's probably just as many young men as young women. And so that, that data, that database and that, that set of fans is just growing as, exponentially. And I think when I look back to Kobe Bryant, to be honest with you, and the time he spent, you know, promoting the women's game, and now you see the men in the NBA superstars supporting the women. We go to UCF volleyball games and the football players are there or the baseball team is there. I think there's this beautiful mutual respect and love for sport and equity that we are seeing front and center and the people, they want more, they want more. It's fun. It's exciting. Um, even when it's not exciting, we find things to talk about. Right. And I, I just think it's a really, really exciting time um, to be around women's sports and somebody too. I know Jeff, you may not um, know this about me, but I, I do call um, international women's basketball. Mm -hmm. So I'll go on big um, circuits for FIBA and, and call the women's game. Um, at the America Cup level and then the World Cup level. So um, out in Sydney and, and such. And then because of some of these popular anthems and this inclusivity, um, they invited me out to the Men's World Cup. And so here I am, you know, calling and spreading the gospel. You know, I'm a, I'm a woman, obviously, being around a men's sport. But the, the respect that I see in those hallways, the, um, the autonomy I'm given, there, there's a tide and it and it's shifting and it, I'm really, really excited. Yeah. You know, it's funny because, you know, the, the term throw like a girl used to be an insult to, to guys. Now I watch softball. And I want to throw like a girl. <laughs> me too. Can someone teach me? <laughs> it is, it is, it is exceptional to see how the athleticism, you know, has, has really blossomed as well. So for UCF volleyball, you know, let's take things back to the off season. You know, Todd Dagenet is the builder of this excellent program. He leaves the pro ranks. You lose a superstar and legend in McKenna Millville to graduation. You know, on paper, that looks like that's going to be a rough transition, right? But you get the promotion of longtime assistant Jenny Maurer, and she provides that continuity. What do you think the intangibles Coach Maurer has brought to the table to face that challenge? Well, listen, I mean, at this point, right, Coach Dajane is out. You lose your, your All-American, or I think at that point she was a five-time All-American. Um, and the expectations are low, right? So this team comes out with a passion 
to prove people wrong. And what I'm so impressed about Coach Maurer is she came and joined this team seven years ago as a, a culture builder, a culture setter, right? A lot of those things that we know as adults matter when we're in the workplace. And guess what? They matter too when you're working with a team. So for me, what most stood out about this, this transition for her is the institution of those core values. These young women know who they are. They have a voice, they have an opinion. And in fact, it was uh, Claudia Dillon and some of the veterans that helped you know, navigate Coach Maurer through this transition and said, we're staying and we're gonna, we're gonna be the glue here. And we're also gonna you know, be a key recruiter, right? Um, you didn't see the turnover that many would have might, have might have expected. And I think for me being able to see the way this team has been playing for the majority of the year with a lot of heart, a lot of fight, and they're having more fun than I have seen them have since, you know, in the early Todd Dagenet times. I was a student at UCF in 2007. That was the year I believe he came in. I've been around the program, goodness, uh, 15 years. Um, and you've seen a few things. <laughs> a few things, a few things. But I will tell you this the joy that these young women have playing a game and repping UCF has been the most impressive. And I think. Coach Maurer um, gets a lot of credit for keeping that culture intact and really making it an environment that these women can thrive. And, and of course, you know, not every play or pass is going to be perfect, but they're humans and they, they really, you can tell they really enjoy each other's company and, and the run is evident. Yeah. And, you know, and you mentioned, you know, Claudia Dillon, you know, obviously there was a lot of terrific talent around Melville over the past few seasons. And it really looks like it, there's been a great group effort you know, to kind of fill that void. Yeah. And it's by committee, which is exciting, right? Jeff, I know you've been around the team a lot. Last year, the ball, everybody knew where the ball was going, right? Where's Melville? Is she in the back row? Is she front row? Is she on the pin? Where, where is Melville? Because she's going to get that final touch. And so teams really figured out the system because it was very uh, singular, right? Now I look at it and they have so many dimensions and so many offerings across the court for, um, for, for production on offense, right? Even we've seen Abby Schomers come out and dump the ball at will and see that confidence booming right from the setter, the quarterback. And I just, for me, I'm most impressed, or I guess I get most excited on air when the middles get activated. So seeing Abby Hansen come in there in the front row and just, you know, her instincts take over and she just smashes the ball at every opportunity. And it, it she changes the speed, she changes the placement, but she just knows what to do. So I, I kind of sometimes, got to catch my jaw from, you know, <laughs> from hitting the ground here because it, it, it's artistry out there. And so, yeah, yeah. You, you enter Ava armor to the true freshman that stands at six foot five. Um, they just have a lot more weapons and I didn't even talk about Emily Wilson, right? She's right. like leading the conference and serving and just, and I think leading the team too. And, 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 um, uh, kills. So I'm, it's just, you've gone from a single, uh, entity who, which was phenomenal, right? McKenna Melville was one of a kind to an arsenal and you, you, right. This is how you catch teams having to guess and play multiple defenses and making sure they're covering at the net and the block is there. Um, where Melville, I think teams had a lot more opportunity to set up and, and, and break, break that down to at the same time. Yeah. Now, of course the Knights were undefeated in the big 12 going into the weekend, which you've alluded to earlier and boy, they ran into a big buzzsaw in Baylor. Um, you know, and I, we see why Baylor's now ranked number 20 in, in the country. Um, you know, it, I, it looked like the Knights had a lot of unforced errors. Baylor was exceptional at blocking. I think that was a, a, a master class that uh, took place over the weekend. How do you think the Knights bounce back uh, when they host TCU later this week? Yeah, I think it's a good gut punch, right? Like you're not going to come through in the Big 12 and have your way at every opponent. We've seen some gritty matches, and certainly when we saw them last, um, a five-setter, um, at home, you know, we got to see them challenged. And so I think this is going to be good for them. This is a group that really, um, you know, relies on each other for the bounce back. And, and this is a group that's been tested. They also don't have a lot to lose. They were picked to what finished seventh in the big 12. Right. So I know that this group, um, has that, that passion to make sure that they're proving themselves and better the gut punch now versus the postseason. And I know this group has the tenacity and the talent to move forward, but listen, we, I don't know about you, but I learned all my 
you know, big lessons in life when I'm failing or I fall face forward. Right. So I think the, the team is going to pick themselves off the ground. They're going to identify, okay, the passing wasn't strong. Okay. We didn't, we, our defensive transition was not there. They're, they're going to pick this apart. And for a team that does so well in a scramble situation, I mean, I think there was probably a little starstruck in their eyes, right? You're on a big stage. There was a few days in, in, in Waco, Texas. I'm sure they had ventured out and, and had a little bit of fun. Um, but I think they, they saw another side to themselves that Baylor exposed that they can essentially get back in the gym and work on. I think against TCU, I think it's a total, total, excuse me, a total winnable mini series between TCU. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's a chance to, to show that rebound and that, that resilience. Yeah. And you mentioned like going into the big 12, how stacked is this? I mean, you look at the schedule, it doesn't get any easier ranked teams in Houston. We at least know what Houston's all about with the rivalry over the last few years of the American BYU, Texas, Kansas, all still left to play on the schedule. I mean, this is really where the tire hits the highway, right? <laughs> oh, you're telling me. Yeah. So we knew when we saw them last week that th this is going to be the turn in the conference, right? They've already went won there at this point. It was five and L oh, um, when, when I think both, Kelly Burke and I saw them. I have it on my calendar. I got to look against uh, let's see, Kansas State, the 14th. Yeah. So when they said that when they faced Kansas State, that went to five. We knew that that, that was going to be the turn of the conference. And they proved themselves in, in winning out that five. Um, but you're right. It only goes uphill from here. I, I think this is a group that we're going to see transformation happen at this point, right? The, the preseason schedule was tough. This is a unit of a team that doesn't, you know, doesn't back down from a challenge. And I think that's always going to bode well. Now they do have some like youngsters, right? So Ava Armour, she did not play the majority of that second game against Baylor, right? So she, as a, a true freshman, I'm sure there were some lessons and, and learning curves that she was absorbing in real time. Um, Lauren Clark came out and was, you know, a, an arm that the team needed. It just, it all stemmed from the passing and, and, and you're right, the block, the big block. So from what I know, I know this group is going to make those adjustments and they're, they're looking to, you know, pick themselves up against TCU. And I think they're going to be, they're going to be back on track. I don't think if I were a predicting woman, I think um, they walk away with a, with a sweep here. So. Yeah. I mean, I mean, very impressive to go seven Oh, to start out in their big 12 life. And in the fact that, you know, they hadn't lost since, you know, what mid September to Purdue. I mean, it, you know, kind of get a little spoiled it felt a little weird when they lost a set <laughs> right but like that's what i'm saying like we learn so much from our losses as humans as athletes um as volleyball teams and being exposed at this point of the season there's plenty of time to make make adjustments and reevaluate and try out different rotations and find out you know where the kinks are and I, again, rather now, Jeff, than, you know, come, you know, conference time with the playoffs and such. So I, I think we're going to see a, a refreshed or maybe rejuvenated team that is, is what we've all hoped, I will tell you this, be more commanding and mm -hmm. in their closeout. Yeah. So as you mentioned, you know, you've been, you've been around the scene for a while, you know, what's over the past few years, what is like kind of the most, what's the biggest thing that stands out? to you on um, as far as the growth of the volleyball program at UCF? I mean, they've always been ahead of the bunch, right? I think if you, you use the analogy of like, you know, <laughs> women mature faster than men, right? It's just a few years lag. I think this group and what um, Todd Dagenet instituted a, at a very uh, young point in the university's, um, you know, NCAA um, history book, so to speak, I think, laid the foundation for where they are now right was it perfect no but was the the demand for a high level of volleyball in 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 what is required to play with the best in the the nation there yes and i think one thing that it has shifted and i love the continuity of jenny mauer here this is a group that went to europe in the off season and where, you know, you talk about the transfer portal and people coming in and going out. This was a unit that really got to, to bond in that off season together, figure out people's eating schedules, how they like to travel, you know, who's got the air earbuds watching what movies, you know, those types of things are, are uh, replaceable um, as far as creating those bonds and that chemistry and, and the way this team plays. But I just been always so impressed by the sport and the dedication that the women have. Um, 
and I'm not saying that the other programs don't have that. I think it, it's all been, I think it's just been the most consistent, I want to say, because right, we had the good years with Johnny Dawkins and, and the men's basketball team and the uh, Taco Fall, right? And the, the Duke game that could have gone either way. Um, <laughs> so, and then I think to uh, <laughs> UCF and the undefeated Peach Bowl season and Scott Frost. And um, so I was there for all that as a, as a full-time reporter back then. Mm -hmm. And I, w I think consistency is is the word. And, and that's why we're seeing UCF excel so well here in the first year of the Big 12. Yeah, I think before the season, I had volleyball and soccer as the best, as a toss up, as the best teams prepared to go into the Big 12. Yeah, I mean, your, I mean, your picks here in Premonition is right, because the men's soccer team, right, is is high up there. Yeah, yeah, most definitely. So yeah, we got a lot of good things uh, going on as far as uh, that is concerned. So one of the things I do as a hobby on this podcast is analyzing broadcasters. Um, oh, no. <laughs> which I do with Eric Lopez and Adam Eaton. And, uh, and I know you know Eric very well. Um, so what I wanted to say is, you know, I really appreciate the enthusiasm you bring to a broadcast. And I think you have a have that ability that I don't think everybody always has to punch it up in the big moment. Yeah. Well, I, I appreciate that, Jeff. Wow, I feel like um, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm, I think I'm blushing. You can't tell <laughs> the camera here. <laughs> It, you know, what's interesting is it's something that I've been cognitive of and aware of because you hear all these different critiques and how people listen to things. And, and so you kind of have to find the voice that's you, but authentically you. Um, so it's been a struggle. I, I won't say a struggle, but it's been a challenge of identifying, you know, that those scenarios, right? Because sometimes in, in, calling a lot of games. Um, I mean, when I was in Japan, I did like 22 and 10 days. So like you kind of fight some of the monotony to mm -hmm. the sport, but volleyball doesn't allow you to do that because I'm telling you when I came back from Japan and I called that first weekend, I think it was against FSU. My head Jeff was like that. I couldn't keep up like, and I couldn't see. And, um, I, I will tell you having a partner too that knows the game and loves the game, it makes your job 10 times easier. And yeah, we're just having fun. At the end of the day, this is a sport that brings people together and we're just having fun. Yeah. Well, that's interesting to say. I, I was at the FSU game and I think you probably expended more energy than the players there. <laughs> well, you saw me, right? Okay. So I have my boards and I have them in front of me, but I can't see our broadcast position is literally right at the net. <laughs> And so, yeah, uh, Aaron Campbell, who's frequently with me on air, she goes, girl, you get more steps than like, I think the volleyball players. I'm like, you're right. Cause I'm moving, I'm shifting. I can't see everything. Yeah. 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 And, that, and, that's, and, and I think kind of going back to the enthusiasm thing too, you, you, when we were talking about the growth of women's sports too, one of the things I love about volleyball and, and softball, especially, you know, is the constant good time you see you know it's it just it does it just can't help but make you smile right it does and i think that that's probably like a really enjoyable moment for us too right you get the best seat in the house um you get to see phenomenal athletes go to work and the excitement the joy the passion the speed the tempo the um the elegance to the sport too i will say that that you know, those are things that keep us engaged at a super high level. And so when Aaron and I really get excited or when I'm with Kelly Burke and we get really excited, we really try to show that um, through our broadcast and, and, and give the women their, their due, uh, their, their due roses, so to speak yeah. uh, on air. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. I really enjoyed this conversation and uh, I guess you will be on the call later this week. Yes, I will be on the TCU games alongside Kelly Burke. So come and come visit us. Come say hello. Absolutely. We'll have to look to do that. So Despina, thank you so much. And uh, again, thank you for being on the show. Yeah, I appreciate you, Jeff. Anytime.